Hi everyone and welcome back to this week's episode of Fight Chat Friday from TKD Coach Academy. This week we're continuing our series looking at the path to victory for the various champions from the ATF European Championships in La Nucia in Spain. And today we're going to have a look at Vitaly Solovay in the male minus 57 kilo senior division. So stick with us if you'd like to see how we got there. everybody welcome back to fight chat friday so this week it should be a shorter one we had only three fights in the path to victory um so 57 and plus 85 and the males usually want uh, the, the two smaller divisions yeah so um usually in the in the, the more stacked divisions in terms of numbers you're going to have the five rounds realistically to be a champion whereas the plus division plus 85 and minus 57 Usually, it's, it's the three or the four fights, depending on the draw on your boy. Absolutely. And I think uh, this this one is an example of where I think uh, there's potentially a big case being made for uh, qualifying points or rankings. Or, you know, it would have been very hard this year anyway because there was so little competition in the previous two years. But we ended up with an, a really, really nice fight as the, the quarterfinal or the first match for Vitali in this case against uh, Yassine Talhui from uh, from Spain. And it was one of those ones where we picked out both of these guys as potential favourites before the draws were issued. And we talked about that on, on, on the show mm. at uh, an earlier stage. So glad they met and they were able to kind of uh, settle the, the, you know, the bragging rights there. But it would have been nice to see this in a medal position match for sure. So let's jump right into yeah, that one and Yassine have a quick came, look. Go for it, Richie. Yeah, Sorry. came straight through from um, from junior, yeah, and he he's, he stood up well to him and gave him a good test. So uh, that's nice to see that he, he wasn't stepping down and uh, almost just being somebody to run through. So he stepped up to the plate and, and gave it his all. So it made for a great match. Absolutely. So we we'll jump right in, and uh, like many of these matches, they, they started at quite a high intensity. Yeah, definitely. So it's it's like every single fight we've seen now, it starts off with that front leg battle and, and a battle for control of the centre. But it uh, starts off at a frantic pace and, and that's important to be ready to come out of the blocks at the start. And, you know, right away we're also seeing, you know, applications from very good principles. So, you know, as the scene goes high, Vitali's coming under and it, you know, it straight away shows the guys are clued in. They have their, you know, they're, they're, they have some thoughts already about what's going to be effective against each other. And you've seen testing the blitz there and finding yeah, definitely. What the I, range. What I really like about that as well, Adrian, is that he actually continued to press through. So even though um, like Vitaly tried to get the defensive sidekick, yeah. usually people would stop there. But he kept pressing through and made sure that there was an exit counted and made sure that it wasn't a very clear stop shot from the Vitaly. Yeah, and unfortunately we don't have the scoreboard for this one. But, you know, yeah. uh, I know this one is... Uh, uh, is very very close in periods uh, you know from uh, watching it at the time but uh, uh, and, and listening to the chat afterwards but we can see some some exchanges there and even some similar shots off the guys where just looking at this one again where Yassine is picking the um, or uh, Vitaly is trying that same under the leg shot but he's misjudged it and Yassine hasn't gone high so he's ended up getting caught on the hip then as, uh, as Yassine's come forward yeah, of course, the straight line is going to win out there as opposed to coming around the circle if the line is the same, so if they're both going middle. So uh, it works better if, if Yazine was going for a high section shot, for example, then you could come under it a bit more. Um, but I, I really like in the testing and uh, the blitz from Yazine, he's he's putting some pressure on Vitaly and it's not something we've seen so far too much of somebody being able to put the pressure on him in terms of the blitz and putting him on the back foot. So... Um, He's getting off some nice defensive psychics too, but at the same time, they're they're not clear as day for each side. No, and I think they where uh, you know they, this as a rivalry might grow over time is where uh, uh, where Yasin gets a little bit more of a read of Vitali's rhythm and distancing mm. and might do it. I've uh, I've actually just brought this one in because uh, I know this was given as a two point score to Yasin, and from our side here, it actually looks like a two point score um, on the sidekick coming in. Uh, you know when you watch it first in full speed, but this was the the uh, the freeze frame shot of it, um, and you can see you know the 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 foot down here, um, well below the belt. But it's one of those things that in the moment it 
can be very very difficult for the referees to pick out exactly what they've seen and it can look like there's been a good contact yeah it's like the distance is so important on the shots you give if your shorts is if especially on kicks if they're very compact and tight mm. then it's, it's very hard for you to get the return it's it, whereas the the punch because of the distance you have to bypass to get to it it makes it much more visible in general so yeah absolutely uh this is an interesting one just for you seeing kind of uh, a hard thing to do against vitaly but judging almost the drop so he, he's he's interfered yep. with the leg he's just got his shoulder on it and then uh as the leg is dropped it's given him the opportunity to uh to effectively punish the drop then but it's it's kind of set up by him putting his shoulder on a, a middle sidekick here and uh you know, or, or getting the hand to it and just interfering with it a little bit so Vitaly can't drop at good distance. And, uh, you know, it's nice to see a new thing tried within the match and then the perfect response. Okay, yeah, mm. good shot, but here we go. He's got a great reverse off, the, off that backhand coming through. And again, that's that's something, that's a bit of a trend now, Adrian, isn't it, that we've seen in these um, Path to the Final videos of the Euros mm. that off the, the breakdown when the referee stops the match, that people are ready with that reverse to come right through no matter what happens. So whether their opponent does something that that it responds that or not, it doesn't matter. They're, they're, it's like their their decision is made and that's their go-to. So that's interesting now that a couple of champions favour that shot. Absolutely. And, you know, it is imposing themselves back in the match and so on. This one's interesting because we, we've, we've brought this up as a, an example. So this one is another example of holding and, and a foul. We can see Yassine's hand gets over the top of the leg there. So I think this is, you know, uh, a, yeah. a pretty clear one. But, you know, a, a really nice change up from Vitaly as well to go to the direct headshot on the counter. Um, and one of the things he can do being one of the taller guys in the division as well. Yeah, and we kind of spoke before the show about this, myself and yourself, before we recorded. The fact that he's so tall and has so much range mm. people have to work very very hard to, to get in the gap there and, and they have to the the effort that they have to make to come into his range to put him on the back foot and to attack him and just allows him that extra maybe like half a second which allows him to pull off those lovely shots on the defensive the, the counter shots to the head and even those super long sidekicks it's just that that distance is just a bit further out yeah i imagine than any of the 57s are used to yeah, and I mean, it's one thing as well, and if you're watching these as, you know, someone who's a little bit more novice to the uh, uh, to high-level sparring, you know, just a thing to consider that your stance is like a battery for time. So the longer that your stance is when you're on the defensive, the more time you can win yourself by retreating into your stance. So as Vitaly retreats into his back leg from a longer stance position, he has loads and loads and loads of time. Uh, so it makes even when his opponents are explosive and fast like when on the two occasions where Yassine went in with the blitz there was still plenty of room in the stance so as long as Vitaly can put his head back fast enough he can basically stretch out the time for that blitz and get his yeah. sidekick in there um, and the opposite is true sometimes going forward and so we were talking about some of the strategies that Vitaly uses and it'll come up in some of the other fights so we'll, we'll save it for there but where he uses different strategies to shorten his stance to vary the distance on his front leg because trying to kick explosively from a very long stance is really hard um, and tends to make it predictable. So he has a strategy around that as well. So Yeah, definitely. But um, just to, before we move on to that um, that next clip of the semi-final, mm. I think that it's important as well to, to mention that the whole idea of the, the range that needs to be bypassed is there because of the rhythm changes and the, the deception that Vitaly creates because yeah. he's not creating the same sidekick and the same look off his front leg all the time. Sometimes it's long, sometimes the chamber is tight, sometimes it's extended, mm. and that's very, very important. It, like it's, it's very hard to get a read on him. And then when people when he gets ahead on the scoreboard and people are looking to put the pressure on, it's, it's very hard for people to get a, a good read and to pick the right moment then. Yeah, and we talked about that a little bit last week with Magomed, where um, he he didn't vary the height so much, but the depth and yeah. the, the the degree of his, his chamber quite a bit. And we can see that. And the next little layer on top of that being with Vitaly adding changes of height uh, to the to the kick as well. So, yeah, as you said, as we move towards the, the semi-final and the summary of that, unfortunately, we're not going to see the you know a, a great depth of skill out of this one because uh to be honest uh vitaly didn't really need to come out of second or third gear for for this one there's a few scores in the first round 
nice clear sidekick but it, it, it happens to be that that sidekick illustrates our point very very well yeah we yeah have the I changes that... yeah changes we see in... as well um <laughs> sorry there's a little bit of a lag and yeah. we're overcutting each other go ahead adrian sorry i was just going to see we're seeing a couple of different strategies there and i kept it in slow motion so we can see it you know of the shortening of the stance slight changes of the distance and then it disguises the long to short disguises mm -hmm. a shortening of the stance which lets him push and vary high to low and then a nice long stretch out onto the hip so you know it, it looks so simple it's just a front leg sidekick but there's a lot that's gone into creating and crafting that front leg sidekick yeah definitely and he changes his hand position and his body position as well a lot and um, based on the shot he wants so maybe the front hand is coming really low sometimes he brings the the back hand across the body almost like a guarding block so it's um it's it's very important to note that the very high level guys have multiple strategies whether based on what they want to achieve sometimes their stance will be a little longer sometimes it'll be a little shorter so it's not like they're they're just coming up with the same plan no matter what they have solutions based on what they see and the information they perceive and and the looks that their opponent gives them absolutely I think there's a, a little bit of an example to be taken in this as well. So after we get this sidekick score, and we can see it's well rewarded on the scoreboard, um, we get the, uh, a couple of exchanges to hands. And there's work that's gone in and good movement that's created these exchanges with the hands. And he has gotten value in terms of exits out of it, but he's not gotten a reward on the scoreboard. And so this match that really is a one-sided match, there isn't too much coming from Moldova back uh, you know, against Vitaly that he has to deal with. He's, he's not getting ahead in the way that he'd expect and you know it uh he, he's ending up relying on as such creating that third warning to get that second uh card in his favor and then it comes down to again that first principles okay we'll clear you out of it with a sidekick uh nice and clear to the hip and then there we go we get to our uh three nil and then four nil and you know it was a case of looking at the okay what are these referees looking for what's scoring in this ring here today that's what I'll give you. And I, the rest of what I've left in this clip here is is really just um, the second round. There, there was nothing. So, you know, the, it, it, you kind of had this situation where uh, Vitaly has the choice to really go and, and work and create a highlight reel as such and doesn't and, and basically conserves himself uh, a little for the final. But uh, uh, this is the closest you get to kind of a bit of uh, hard work or, you know, explosive work. Most of the rest of it was waiting for his opponent to come at him, knowing that he's 4-0 up, and that not happening. Yeah, I, I think that's that's the important point. Vitaly shines when people open up, and we're going to see this in the final towards the end. When people open up and go for it, and mm. they go a little bit gung-ho, Vitaly picks people off so nice, and he picks up some great shots. Um, but yeah, like it takes two to tango, and when somebody has been very conservative and... Um, not looking to give anything away it's, it's it's a bit more difficult for sure but uh you know even as we're talking about that like uh, two of the irish guys uh, uh both thomas fogarty and uh, jamie williams have fought vitaly uh neither of them have taken the win on that front but they've had very different matches and yeah. thomas would tend to be a more out he'd offer more would we'll say in terms of his attacking uh, options uh, than jamie would typically but it's meant sometimes the scores against Vitaly have landslid away from him once he's got behind. Whereas Jamie's match has been very, very, very close. He's not offering Vitaly as much and Vitaly's having to take risks to come into contact. Uh, but again, even though the matches have finished very level, you know, maybe a warning in it, I think once in, uh, was it Germany in, in the semi-final? Um, you know, a, a very close match there as well. But but everything close, no major scores from either side. And then the opposite for where, you know, Thomas would, you know, explode to uh, Vitaly, but Vitaly might pick off his score. And once he'd get ahead and Thomas has to chase it kind of, you know, it, it opens up the scores a little more. Um, but that's it. You tend to see the very best from Vitaly when he's uh, a little bit ahead and someone has to press forward and does press for him. And then he can go into the that pulling action and, uh, and look to get those uh, explosive counter scores. So as you said, we do get to see that in the final. Yeah, so uh, Christian Papa from Romania, he's somebody that's well known on the scene a long, long time now. So um, he, he's coming out looking to put the pace on the start like we see all the time. Busy front leg and then maybe dies down maybe 
15, 20 seconds into the match. But again, we see this example of C. Vitali pulling his back leg under him. So he attacks with the front leg and then he pulls his, um, his standing leg tight up underneath him to give him lots of balance mm -hmm. and lots of ability to push forward with explosiveness again. And we see there's like there's a, a massive um, range difference here in, in this particular match. And Vitaly uses this to his strength really well. Yeah, and I think that kind of subtle thing of when the front leg lifts, sometimes there's no great push off of it. Uh, but, you know, as in the, the initial push doesn't carry much distance forward. And you can see actually there that uh, an example of where uh, Christian's decided to challenge the, that in initial leg lift. And... Uh, and he's almost gotten a return out of it. He didn't quite get it right. But, the, uh, you know, most people find it very difficult to do that against Vitaly because he comes from that longer range. So you have to be very explosive on his first leg lift and he disguises it so well it is a challenge to do that. But when he gets to lift that leg and bring the bottom leg under it, now he's basically kicking from a short stance and he can carry over those longer distances and to the bigger heights as well. Yeah, and I think, like, Kiki had a maybe a strategy of like trying to come under a lot of these shots, but um, it's very hard to do then because Vitali shoots to the body really long as well, and that's the straightest line that there is from from hip to hip. So that's going to be like the the longest distance you're going to have to bypass. Um, so the fact that he varies the heights and even like the hip mobility he has here to be able to switch that, it's not like the hacks kick really that we see people no. throw these days. It, it's that's literally a toss to the Max. so uh, yeah like we have to pull that off and then we see this is the one again that we see the very long direct one and um, so like when you're when you're trying to come under and get through the axe kick like we see here and then he comes out in the next exchange and he hits you a super long direct side kick to the body it's like it's very very hard for you to get that read on him and to decide on a good decision and a good point of of initiation to get going to get some scores that's it. And even, you know, it is rare enough that Vitaly will go directly to hands. He, you know, he'll tend to hold it for those restarts or, uh, you know, for when people are really being pulled in. But when he drops that into the mix, it adds even just a, another little level of variation onto what's going on. So we haven't exactly seen what's going on in that particular exchange, but Vitaly does come out of that with the, the four flags. Yeah, well, you see uh, Oleg in the chair is clapping and looking happy anyway, so I'm assuming something went well. But here is where we see Vitaly, like, really at his best here when people open them open up they're down four nil and they have to take risks he's able to really just kind of make those good decisions and usually he, he makes it look easy as well with headshots and things like that so mm. um very nice and and the the way he's able to come over that blind shoulder and come over to the over the shoulder onto the head is, is very very nice and we, we the, the match finishes with so a, a crowd pleaser uh a few yeah. digs and a, and a hug so yeah, well, check it out. I like the both respecting each other there straight away and acknowledging they're both games. So I think that uh, why not leave, leave, leave them at its last 10 seconds and they're both trying to let each other know that there'll be another day maybe. So uh, yeah, that's good to see. I like that. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a tricky one because like when you're looking at the crowd in the background and it does happen to be Sweden is up next, yellow and blue, Ukraine are in yellow and blue, Romania are over there, yellow and blue. So it looks yeah, like there's, yeah. you know, it's, it's a difficult thing to see, uh, you know, what the, the crowd reaction is. But Kiki's reaction after that was fantastic. He went back. Yeah. There was a big, a big lift from the crowd. Uh, it wasn't a sulk. It was a, we got a silver, you know, and the Romanians uh, kind of took that very, very well. You had a great crowd reaction. So, you know, it was actually a brilliant finish to a division um, to have the two guys. And what really, I don't know if it carries through the video there, but Kiki was really close. It was 1-1 after the first round. It stayed very close until that long side kick kind of going into the corner. Um, and then the, the head shot uh, with the axe kick. And it, it kind of drifted away then. And there really was nothing but to finish with a bit of a high. And, you know, the lads threw a few slaps at the end. And they ended Why up not? with the minus points for it. But, you know, the minus points there are understandable. But at the same time, it was just a case of we were here to, to give a bash. Come on, we, we, let, let's go for it. But, you know, I thought that one just finished with a very good atmosphere, a very good feeling between the two fighters. You know, they played the game. One guy played it better than the other. Congratulations. And that's what it comes down to, I think. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I love the fact that after that exchange that Kiki went in and initiated and, and like, touched gloves straight away as well. Just the, the respect was there. It was like, you know, let, let's put it all on the line. But the respect is there. And that's, that's the important thing. So uh, I think the referee 
recognize that as well and there, there's no real malice in it you know so it's, it's just both guys giving it their all absolutely so when we think in terms of um you know uh, vitaly's progress to the final and all that kind of thing what are the main kind of key points or talking points or what commentary can we give on vitaly's style yeah look to be honest i think he didn't really come out of third gear if i'm honest like we, we've seen him before and and really turn it on i think that he, he was cruising here um and it, it's very hard as we said because of the reasons we mentioned earlier for people to get him going and and really put a pace on him with good intensity yazine did a, a great job at it and tried to to match him with the intensity and the pace um and then it's a, it's very difficult when he has that great range he's mm. very clever he has the fitness and he has the speed off the front leg and the sharpness um and then when he's shown so many different looks off that front leg different ranges different heights different shots and um, it's it's very very difficult to be able to to put that pace on and, and get a good return so i think vitali understands and he's very self-aware of his game and he knows what people are going to try to do to, to pull him out and, and to get the win and he, he sure. understands where he his strengths lie and he's able to just put them to the forefront really really well uh, i think that like it's interesting to mention as well adrian that like based on all these videos that we've been doing here now it's it's um what we've seen off the front leg as well with magomed last week yeah anybody who's getting a good return with the side kicks it's not about one kick in isolation it's almost like you have to commit maybe six or seven shots off the front leg with with varied kind of looks to be able to score that one big clear shot i think that's an important lesson for people who are watching here maybe who aren't at that top level yet that you need to be patient and you need to to build up that front leg and give different looks to your opponent it's not going to be throw one shot score one shot and Absolutely. that's a very very important takeaway for people maybe at the color belt level and i think they like the the further takeaway from that is you're not going to get that by kicking a punch back at home yeah. so the actually I, I feel like I, you know, I, I've said that and I meant it when I said it, but there is an element where hitting a fixed target, if your whole intention the whole time is to practice your variation in your footwork, your shifting of your distance and so on, okay, there's there's a basis there. It, it You know, it, it's something to give you, you know, the feel of a kick at the end and a way to practice just your movement, okay? You know, maybe having a mirror in front of you and, and you know, seeing can you get into a less conscious uh mode of changing and testing and changing your rhythm shortening and lengthening your stance you're changing the distance between you and your opponent but it just works so much more naturally and so much easier if you've got a real person in front of you who has a job to do and you're trying to catch them they're trying to catch you or not get caught whatever it happens to be it's just going to work easier and i think that's one of the things that is so evident when you go back to that first round uh or even with the last match with kiki there that you know you watch the interactions between the two and for me, the big difference uh, in terms of, well, Yasin had two things that are uh, challenging him there. The first is he's a little smaller. Uh, so he never really had the option to take his front leg to the head uh, in the same way as uh, uh, as Vitaly. It would have been more of a, a, a tell for Yasin to kick to the head because he'd have had to change his body position more. Um, but, you know, but the, the differences were slight misreads in terms of tempo or timing or the, the distance between himself and Vitaly got him caught with a couple of defensive side kicks and put him under pressure. Um, I think, you know, those were very small details, very, very important details, but very, very small details. But if you look at how both of them moved in terms of their changing of their di their distance, the length of their stance, their, their spacing between themselves and their opponent, and taking turns in forcing the tempo, I think, you know, some really, really good stuff to be learned from that first fight, you know? Yeah, but like just to back up on your point there as well with the the hitting the bag versus your opponent kind of an idea mm. like the the changes of those stance the changes of tempo the changes of rhythm these are all things that must happen because of the context the context that your opponent's given you so like you really really do like everybody sees the the stuff that the Solovays is putting out online great training clips of, of really nice combination training videos that are really good but look at the the real intricate details that we showed here today that make Vitaly the champion he is. Mm. Like, we don't see those things in those videos, the changing of the stance. He's not doing a side kick, and then he's doing a different adjustment for his next drill. So it, it shows that this is the stuff that's it's nice to watch, and it's, and it's important to your training for different reasons. But the, the real, real important skills that 
you need can't be trained like this in isolation it's based on the context of your opponent what they do what they don't do the space between you the, the even the scoreboard the shots available to you so it's very important i think to, to maybe go back on that point that you mentioned that you need a live opponent to work with and it's very clear that these guys from ukraine although they do very great stuff on the pads and drilling and stuff that they do a lot of live work as well and i yeah. think that that's an important message for people that it don't think that it's just the hitting the gloves and the drills and the combination training it's it that's important but the the real live stuff and the interaction and the dynamics between you and a training partner are the real real skills i suppose it's the equivalent of like every you know most adults in the world today are seeing on instagram the you know the fitness models uh or you know the the, the people who are selling their programming or their thing and you know you get photo after photo of them in immaculate condition you know, uh, not a hair in sight, tanned, uh, ripped, six packs and all the rest of it. And they forget that, yeah, that was taken, you know, all of those shots were taken in a two week span, a series of photo shoots, and then they get recycled for the whole year um, to help them sell their program. Yeah. And they forget that, yeah, those people have, you know, Christmas as well. And they, you know, there, there's times when they don't look their best and everything. That's the element where, you know, we come back to what does training look like and what you put to Instagram is the nice little snappy combinations where everything goes well and you know it, it, it looks like you really are dialed in and everything is perfect and you couldn't possibly make a mistake the real training happens in that part where you are challenged so remember if you're challenged in your training you are making mistakes you are getting things wrong it is a, it's a discovery uh you know kind of phase so you should look bad a lot of the time you know when you're actually training at your best and i think that's the thing nobody puts that part of the training on Instagram because it doesn't look good for you know an audience and building followers and all the rest of it um, but it is the part that is effective in bringing you to the next level you being at a point where you're challenged and making mistakes is vital you know so don't forget that in your training definitely and as well like the fact is that real training like this is gonna actually look visually to somebody who just walks in the door like like a sparring match yes so it's like it's like then if you share that, it's just like, oh, people are just sharing their rounds and nobody just sh shares their sparring matches or their sparring training rounds because it's, too much. it's not what, yeah, but it's not what people want to see either. Yeah. So um, I think that's important for people maybe who are missing a little bit of context on the, the whole bigger picture of the mm. training that these guys do because you can tell these guys are high level and uh, there's a reason for that. So I suppose nothing to do but congratulate Vitaly on a really good win and uh, and all of his opponents along the way and I suppose to uh, uh, the guys who, who medal in this division and to Kiki for the, uh, the silver medal so congratulations and then I suppose from us at uh, TKD Coach Academy it's you know it is Christmas Eve uh, as you're watching this so we will wish you a very very Merry Christmas. Uh, and we will be back with a little something special before uh, uh, the new year so uh, I suppose, like always, until next Friday. Enjoy the holidays, everybody. We'll catch you in the next one.